Okay, previously I had built a two-node peer-to-peer network, and here is a three-node peer-to-peer network. Up here, a little bit out of view here, I have a switch which I can press which will activate this circuit. So the objective of this circuit is for each one of these nodes to negotiate with the other two nodes in kind of a chaotic fashion. Um, in order for each one to come up with a unique net ID. Now the valid numbers are 1, 2, or 3. 0 is not a valid number even though they all start out with 0. They have to negotiate with each other for a unique ID of 1, 2, or 3. Now each one of these nodes is exactly identical. So they're all trying to make the same decision at the same time and as fast as possible converge on an equilibrium or a stable state for the network. So I'm going to press the button here a couple of times and let's see what happens. Okay, there's a unique state. There's another unique state. And as I press, continue to press the button here, you will see these unique states appearing. Um, frequently you get the same pattern for several times and then you get something unique. Also if you look especially you can see this one's directly under the camera here you will see sometimes a little flash right there you saw one as it sort of changed its mind in terms of what its unique ID there was a conflict there and it had to change its state in order to um, to rectify the situation and come up with a unique state for itself there you saw another one where it flashed from the right LED to the left in the center one now the one thing that I will show you before we leave this is over here on the far right bottom over here we have um, a little timer chip that's running at about 1.5 kilohertz and what that does is it is basically a dithering circuit that allows for tiebreakers so that's what allows the system not to get hung up in a deadlock. So when you saw that little flash of the LED as it changed from one quickly from one state to another unique state, that is the um, that is the dithering circuit that's coming in and saying, "Okay, guys, go to Plan B and uh, try again to come up with a unique configuration. Otherwise, about mm, maybe 40, 30 to 40 percent of the time, um, it will it will get in a deadly embrace situation and get hung up. But this circuit never gets hung up. It always comes up with a unique um, configuration every time. So here is the underlying architecture or concept behind the design. Each one of those three nodes that you saw on the breadboard is a four state state machine and they are completely and absolutely identical. So each one of those programmed chips it's not a microprocessor it's all done in parallel um, strictly uh, instantaneously looking at the other chips status and within 50 nanoseconds or so deciding what it what state it needs to be in so it's an asynchronous state machine basically or three asynchronous state machines all of them start out in the zero zero state but immediately spin off into one of these other three states either a one two or a three because zero zero was not a valid output in the in the state machine so all three of these instantaneously come online and scramble and wrangle with each other to try to come up with a configuration where their ID is unique from the other two so all these decisions are occurring at um, down at the uh, multi megahertz level um, the status b that's communicated between these these different state machines is that each state machine sends out two bits telling what its state is so it this this state machine sends its state to this and this and so each one of these communicates with the other two so we have two lines going uh, out and two lines coming in from between each one of these states. So there's six communicate lines of communication and there are two bits each.
Now this is all done in parallel. There is no sequential or serial processing going on here. There are no microprocessors. It's all based on mapping the states into a three-dimensional state and then instantaneously allowing the state machines to change states as fast as they want to, completely independent of the other state. So this is the zero zero state. So each one of the state machines would be going through this same um, three-dimensional logic. So it, as each one comes online in the zero zero state, all of these states are invalid. So it immediately has to change to one of the other states. Now you'll see that there are only one, two, three, four, five, six states of equal equilibrium in the network. And that is when the state IDs of the three nodes are, for instance, 123 or 132 or 313 or 323 or whatever, 321, um, those would be unique um, states of equilibrium. So what can happen is that even at the kinds of speeds that we're talking about, it can get hung up um, changing back and forth dithering between uh, two states between two of the state machines, typically what will happen is one of them will back out of the picture. It will find itself with an ID that neither of the other two has and it will hang on to that ID and then the other two state machines will uh, get hung up trying to converge on um, unique IDs. So let's say one of them, the first state machine has a um, an ID of 1, and let's say the second one has an ID of 2, and the third one has an ID of 2. Well, the first one says, well, I've got a 1, and nobody else has a 1, so I'm hanging on to it. Whereas the other two that had the ID of, both had an ID of 2, they both switched to 3, because they see they can't have a 1, because somebody else has got a 1. When they get there, they both have an ID of 3, so they switch back to 2, and they go back and forth like that, so what I've done here is I've introduced so that each state table, next state diagram is exactly the same, I have introduced a dithering condition where for every condition that one of these state machines finds it in, depending on the, on the dithering bit being a 1 or a 0, it might make a different decision. So this gives it an opportunity to make a different decision than the other node that it's competing with and sort of do an end run around the other node and come up with a situation where they're not both making the same decisions at very high speed over and over again so that they can both converge on a unique ID and then the system will become stable. So this is what you're seeing when you see that little flash of the LED as it, as it changes states real fast it is basically saying, well, here's an opportunity for me to make an end run around the other guy and grab a unique ID. And once it sees that it has a unique ID, it will hold on to it. It will not change its ID after that. So that's the way the network converges on its unique ID configuration without the use of any kind of microprocessors or anything else.